Hi YouTube and welcome to my channel. My name is Patrick. The other night I spent an hour waiting for a Windows update to finish installing on my Windows 11 laptop and it just brought back a flood of memories of all the times when I've been trying to get something done but Windows just gets in the way. And what good is an operating system if you can't use it to get work done? And so that brought me back to Linux. And what other Linux distribution would a cybersecurity professional choose than Cubes OS? But I'm not that smart, so Cubes OS isn't necessarily going to work for me. Instead, I went with Fedora Silverblue. There's a few reasons why I went with Silverblue, and there's a few reasons why you might want to consider it too. So, with that being said, let's dig right in. Fedora Silverblue is the future of desktop Linux. It is a revolution in secure computing. Now, yes, there are other distributions that have similar features. There are other distributions that are more secure. But when it comes to striking the balance of security and usability, Silverblue does a standout job. You see, often in cybersecurity, we say you can either have something really secure, or you can have something that really works. And there's a sliding scale between those two things, and you have to pick what end of the scale you want to end up on. That's not so true with Silverblue. Silverblue lets you have something that's both more secure and easy to use at the same time, and that's part of why I like it so much. So obviously, cyber attacks have been in the news quite a bit recently, and one of the most commonly attacked pieces of software is the operating system itself, which makes sense for a few reasons. First of all, it gives ample opportunity for living off the land. And what that means is that instead of installing new software to compromise a system, uh, the attackers instead use existing tools on the system in order to compromise it. Another reason that operating systems are commonly targeted by attackers is because of the level of access they have. Inherently, an operating system has access to all the data that lives on top of it, and at the end of the day, they're after that data. So how does Silverblue address these things? Well, it has a really neat trick up its sleeve, and that is that it is an immutable operating system. Now, this is good for a variety of reasons. First of all, it means that the root file system is read-only. Now, what does that mean exactly? Well, it means that you can't make any changes to the operating system, other than what's in your home folder and your data folders. And that means that if a virus or piece of malware attempted to modify the system in order to gain persistence or do some other nefarious deed, it won't be able to because the file system is read-only. This immediately blocks out entire categories of attacks. Entire swaths of types of viruses and malware just have no chance of executing on a system like this. And another benefit that you get from the immutable system is that it's impossible to break it just with software, because the way it works is the operating system has an update. And so what happens is the computer makes a copy of the operating system while it's running, and then it installs the update on that copy, and then the next time you reboot, it boots off that new copy and slides the old version into the background. Now that's really useful because if an update goes sideways, you still have the old copy of the operating system, and you're never going to be without a working version of your system. Another benefit to that is that updates happen in the background, you just reboot and there's no additional wait time, you just immediately have the latest updates without having to wait on them, which is something that Microsoft could learn a thing or two about. Silverblue also focuses on containerized applications. So obviously with a read-only root file system, you might be wondering, well, how do I install applications? 
Well, Fedora Silver Blue uses flat packs. And yes, I know I've talked a lot of mess about flat packs in the past, but if you use them safely, deliberately and carefully, they can provide a relatively secure user experience while getting out of the way. And the idea of containerizing applications means that if an attacker compromises an application on your computer, they can't compromise the other applications or gain access to things that that application doesn't have access to already. It reduces your attack surface and provides a safer environment. Another neat thing Fedora Silverblue has is a toolbox, because not every application that you want is going to be available as a flat pack. Some applications just don't f don't function in flat packs. Uh, so what you can do when you run into one of those applications is spin up a toolbox. A toolbox is basically another copy of Fedora Linux that lives in its own special container and you can install regular applications on it and then you can run those applications like you would run any other application and they execute from inside that containerized instance of the operating system. And you combine these three things the immutability, the read-only root file system, the containerized applications, and the containerized toolboxes, you really have a robust system that is immune to most types of cyber attacks. Now, that's not to say that everything is perfect. You see, with Fedora Silverblue, let's say you get an info stealer and the info stealer wants to steal your Chrome cookies and data, your saved passwords, that kind of stuff. Well, the architecture of Fedora Silverblue is not inherently going to block that behavior, and it really depends on at what level the compromise occurs. If it occurs inside of the web browser's uh, sandbox, then yes, it's possible that the executing code will be able to steal your information, if it executes from another application's sandbox, well, that other application's sandbox doesn't have access to your web browser's sandbox, and so it's not going to be successful. But my point in telling you this is that Fedora Silverblue is not a magic bullet. There are different types of attacks that will function on Fedora Silverblue. The difference is, the vast majority of attacks won't function here. Now, nothing is going to save you if you're running a curl pipe to bash command with naughty software in it. Now, it's unlikely that that will work on Fedora Silverblue, but it's not impossible. At the end of the day, the thing, that, the, the thing most responsible for your system's security is the way you use it. If you use your system in a safe way with common sense, that's the number one way that you can stay secure in the digital age. So yeah, Fedora Silverblue is pretty sweet, and dare I say, it is the future of the Linux computing space. I think it has a lot of potential, and I think that we're going to see more and more immutable systems spin up in the future, because it's an architecture that works very well with the native packaging formats like flat packs and snaps, and containerizing things is totally a valid approach to keeping things secure and if you're if you're interested in using linux beginner or experienced i recommend that you give fedora silverblue a spin i think you'll be really impressed with how usable it is considering how secure the system truly is anyway thank you for watching thank you for picking my video out of the billions of videos available on youtube there are dozens maybe even millions of you out there who have shown me lots of support, and I'm so grateful for it. I recently became a YouTube partner, which is not something I ever thought that I would achieve, making these silly little talking head pieces, uh, but it, it really means a lot to me. It means a lot to me that I can get paid to make something, to make something artistic. I wouldn't call my videos all that artistic, but it's really, it's really crazy to get paid to create something for you. 
So I hope you enjoyed. And again, thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, leave a little clown emoji in the comments just to let me know you made it. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.